I greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning, and praise God. We shall be reflecting on Genesis 22, verse 1 to 18, and also refer a little bit to Hebrews chapter 10, but the main text that I'll be looking at is Genesis 22, verse 1 to 18. The message is entitled, Responding to God's Love. Responding to God's Love. Crucifixion was something that was so cruel, brutal, painful, and shameful. Jesus, who had healed the sick, he had fed the hungry, he had raised the dead, he had done many things, was rejected, betrayed, accused falsely, and he was tortured. And Jesus even went to the cross and died. And all this was because of God's love for mankind, God's love for you and me. And as Baba Askofu said, John 3.16, a verse that you were taught when you were in Sunday school, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life eternal. Jesus therefore goes on the cross because of his love for us that you and me would be saved. How therefore do we respond to the love of God? And I want us to look at Genesis chapter 8, 22 verse 1 to 18 and just mention four things in which or how we can respond to the love of of God. Number one, we respond to God's love by worshiping him. Abraham, in the context of Genesis 22, verse 1 to 18, he is seen as a worshiper of God. It begins by talking about Abraham being told to go and sacrifice we are hearing the word burnt offering being mentioned. The word altar is mentioned. The mountain is mentioned as a place of sacrifice. And we read in verse 5, I and the boy will go over there. We will worship and come back. Abraham is introduced as a worshiper of God. He had left his people, his gods, and now he had turned to worshiping the living God. Abraham was a worshiper of Yahweh. He was a champion worshiper, a man that we are seeing in this particular context introduced as a worshiper of God, going to worship the Lord. You know, many times in life, we are all worshippers, aren't we? In the book of Hebrews that we read, we are told that these people every year would go and offer sacrifices in worship. Because inside our hearts, when God created us, he created us to worship. Didn't he? God created us to worship. But unfortunately, many times people have turned their worship of God to worship other things. We worship people, politicians, don't we worship them? We do. When I was at St. Stephen's Cathedral as the provost, sometimes when politicians will walk into the, into the church, people will forget, not everybody, but they will forget they're in the church. I remember one day Sonko, the governor then came for a service of the court to prayers that we had just preceding the May Day. And he was a little bit 
complicated as he is usually. And as we are recessing, he refused to recess and went towards the choir. And the choir forgot to recess with us. They were spending time with Sonko. And I hear they were given 300,000, which I never saw to date. People worship politicians. No wonder they have misled us. Don't they mislead us? They do. Not all of them, but most of them. We worship our positions. You know, when you come to church, you come with a position, don't you? But when you come, God wants you to humble yourself in his presence. That you may hear him and that you may humble yourself and do his will. We worship power. We can do anything sometimes to get power. We worship our possessions. We respond to God's love by worshiping him. Praise God. That if the Lord has loved you and he has done something in your life, he has saved you, respond to God's love by worshiping him and declaring that he is my God. As a man of karma, confessing and saying that as for me and my house, we will worship the Lord. We will serve the Lord because you are responding God's love by being a worshiper of God. Secondly, how do we respond to God's love? We respond to God's love by not withholding anything from him. Abraham was willing to give up his only son as a sacrifice. That the Lord tells him, take your only son and go. You will offer him as a sacrifice. And the Bible says that Abraham is not going to withhold even his son. And that he goes as the Lord has instructed him. Because as he responds to God, and he's seeing what God has done for him, Abraham is ready to give out anything. He is not going to withhold anything from God. He is responding to God by saying, God, I will not withhold anything from you. You know, the God whom we serve demands our allegiance, our total allegiance. He wants to be the Lord and the master of your whole life. And that is why when somebody believes in Jesus and accepts Jesus, one says that the Lord is the Savior, is the Lord of my life. Because Jesus has taken you over. And he has taken over your life. That the Lord wants you to respond to his love by not withholding anything from him. In the song that we, the hymn that we sang, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, when we began, the last stanza there says, Demands my soul, my life, my all. Demands my soul, my life, my all. That is the God that we serve. God who says that all that you are, all that you have, you know, that we say that during marriage. We say that when we were getting married at St. Stephen's. All that I am, all that I have, does it happen? Always. And God now forget, therefore comes and says that he demands everything from what? From you. You know, many people in life work so hard for what they want. And you know, they, they work so hard to get what they want, don't they? What have we worked so hard for? For money that we have kept in the bank, don't we? For buildings that we have built. For things we have done. Unfortunately, these things that we have worked so hard for are taken away from us. By what? By old age. Haven't you heard of people that have got hundreds and hundreds of acres? And when they are very old, they tell the driver, can I go and see my farm? Just before they leave their gate to go to the farm, they fall asleep. And when they are going back to the home, they have not seen the farm. Because old age has taken away the thing from them. It is taken away from us by misfortune. Imagine in Turkey how the earthquakes come and they pull down everything. Imagine. You know, Kenyans, sometimes we take things for granted, don't we? We do. You know, misfortune can take away everything of ours. 
that we work so hard and death takes away the things that we hold held so dearly, things that we refuse to give over to God are taken away from us. And we're being reminded today that we can respond to God's love not only by worshipping him, but also by not withholding things from him. And therefore this day as we think about not withholding, what are these things that you cannot withhold? We should not withhold your prime years. You know those years when you are prime, when you are strong, don't withhold them from God. Your skills that you have, every skill is required in church, every skill. Every skill is required in church. You might not be a people's warden, a vicar's warden, a treasurer of the church. I don't know what you want, position you wanted. But you can do anything with anything. Anything that God has given you, you can use it to his glory. Your talents, your resources, and God is saying, do not withhold that from God. We'll be doing a groundbreaking for our children and youth center that will cost around 130, 140 million, as you are told. If the people of God will give with their whole heart, that project will be done quickly. But if the people of God will withhold, they will struggle in their lives. And age, misfortune, and death will take away what we have because we have withheld these things from God. How do we respond to God's love? by worshipping him, by not withholding from him what we treasure most. And thirdly, we respond to God's love by a commitment to do his will. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9 that Jesus was com committed himself to do the will of God fully that led him to the cross. He said, here I am. I have come to do your will, O oh God. That Jesus is saying that I am available. I will commit myself to do the will of God. And he goes to the cross and he fulfills all the will of God. We are told Abraham was determined to do the will of God. He traveled for three days, not in a limousine, not in a helicopter of the politicians, not in a Uber, there were no Ubers those days. What else do we travel in? Not in SGR, what else that we have to travel? Abraham traveled most likely on a donkey. And he traveled with his son and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, the man, the servant, servants for three days, determined to do the will of God. He left behind his wife. Why did he leave his wife, my wife? That's like a poem, eh? Why did he leave behind his wife? He even left behind his servants. The Bible says that when they were approaching the place of sacrifice, he tells his servants, wait, as I go with my son to offer the sacrifice, because nothing was going to stop Abraham from doing the will of God. What hinders you from doing the will of God? Is it your friends? Is it your spouse? Is it your job? What is it that hinders you from doing the will of God? We respond to God's love by doing the will of God. Finally, how do we respond to God's love? We respond to God's love by recognizing the need of a savior and acknowledging Jesus as the Savior. He that was sent by God, that there is no other sacrifice. The blood of bulls and goats and all those sheep could not atone. It is only Jesus who satisfied the will of God and the desire of God. He is the Savior. We respond to God's love by saying that God I have in me a desire to be loved. Don't you want to be loved? Love is so big, isn't it? We have sung songs of love, like which one? Malaika na kupenda malaika. You know how to sing it. Can you sing it? 
But St. Mark's is a holy church. We don't sing those kind of songs. And many other songs that have been sung. We have composed poems on love. We have had programs on love. We have had many things on love. Because people want to be loved. But God, our creator, has loved us with everlasting love. That I don't need any other love out there because God has loved me. And that I can respond to his love and recog by recognizing the need of a savior and acknowledging that Jesus is the savior. You know, Abraham, the champion worshiper, the man who did not withhold anything, the man who did the will of God, he was still infected by sin. He failed many times in his life that no amount of obedience that he tried could match the demand of absolute holiness and perfection by God. And for God himself, therefore, knowing that, that Abraham cannot even fulfill, thus neither can a human being, God will himself provide a sacrifice. And for in Genesis chapter 22, when Abraham is just about to sacrifice because he's holding the knife and the son is at the altar, God stops him and he says, Behold the ram. And later on, many years later, God will provide for himself a sacrifice. He that will fulfill the obedience of God. He that will satisfy God. He that will do what God wants. Genesis 22, verse 1 to 18. And what has happened, what happened to Jesus at Calvary has many similarities. Four of them, both sons of sacrifice, are the only sons. Both incidences also occur at Mount Moriah. Because Mount Moriah was part of Jerusalem, city later, as we can see. But also both sons carried their own wood. Isaac, as he journeys to Moriah, he's carrying his wood. Jesus, as he travels to be crucified, he's carrying his own wood for sacrifice. And finally, both incidents, there was a substitute. In both incidents, the ram became a substitute and that Jesus is a substitute. And the Bible says that God stops Abraham from sacrificing his own son because God himself will provide a sacrifice. Abraham could not satisfy God in his own way. And God therefore intervenes and he sends our, son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He that comes to fulfill the demands of God on your behalf. He that comes to satisfy God. He that comes to take our place that you and me will know that we need a savior. Praise be to God. The thief on the cross. He says about Jesus. He says that we deserve to die. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Didn't he say that? The centurion, he says that surely this man was the son of God. This man was the son of God they realized that they needed a savior. They realized that they needed a savior and that Jesus was the savior of the world. That we respond to God's love finally by realizing that we need a savior and that the Jesus is the savior of this world. Praise be to God. Have you accepted this Jesus as your savior? You know, the thief on the cross, the other one, was close to the Savior, wasn't he? Wasn't he close to the Savior? But he still went to hell. The other guy, he still went to hell. And the story is told about this girl who was in church one day, a big church, probably like the St. Stephen's Cathedral. And she was in a red dress. And her mother could not trace her completely. And they bring the message to the front and say, please announce if you are, we have seen a certain girl, she was dressed in this way and she looks this way. And 
they announce, and somebody, Anasha, finds her up there on the balcony and tells her, could you be the girl that they're looking for? And she says, yes, I'm, I, I'm the one, but I'm not lost, I'm inside. Many people are inside and think they are not lost, yet they are lost. Dr. Mutero, I remember we prayed with you in my office one day, didn't we? And you gave that testimony here. And you came to my office and said, I have been a Christian for many years, just in church. Didn't you do that? And you said, I want to receive the Lord Jesus as my Savior. Didn't you do that? You did. And you said, pray for me that I may, I may receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And you know, many times as a people, you could be in church for many years. You were born in a Christian home. You were baptized. You have got Christian friends. You have been in the PCC. You have been all those things. May our confession today be, this is a son of God. May our confession be that this man has done nothing. I am the one who deserves to die. Remember me in your kingdom, that you will confess Jesus and say that I need a savior and that the savior is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you going to respond to God's love by worshiping him? by not withholding anything from him, by doing his will, and by realizing that you need a savior, and that the savior is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that indeed you extended your love to us, and that today through Jesus we can just enjoy being, enjoying that love of Jesus, walking in the newness of life, being forgiven, free, and knowing that we even have eternal life because of the love of Jesus. Maybe you are here this day and you desire to just have this Jesus in your life and acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior that confidently you are able to confess and say, Jesus, indeed you have forgiven me. I am a new creation. I want to begin new life in you. I want to confidently confess that you are my savior, forgiven, cleansed, and now I'm a child of God. And you just want to me to pray with you that prayer of confession, if you are there today and you just want to say, that is your prayer today, just raise up your hand wherever you are and we shall pray with you. Just lift up your hand if you do want to do so. We pray with you this today as you make that confession. Father in heaven, we praise you and we honor you for your great love. Thank you for our Lord Jesus. May we respond to that love and may we glorify you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.